Thank you all. We needed to do one final event in this building to demonstrate that we are truly overcrowded. Let's be <laughs> University not hand over the keys to Eckstein Hall to us in a timely manner. Good afternoon, everyone. As most of you know, my name is Joseph Turney, and it's my privilege as Dean of Marquette University Law School to welcome you to this event. This is an event that is on the one hand familiar, and on the other, the first of its sort. The familiar part is that we will, this afternoon, welcome into our pro bono society some 65 individuals, Marquette Law students, or if you prefer, future Marquette lawyers. We have done such an admission or induction ceremony for the past several years, and the Pro Bono Society itself was established during the tenure of my predecessor, the late Dean Howard B. Eisenberg. That said, we have never had as robust a group in terms of size as we do today. Perhaps that size has a connection with the other, less familiar aspect of the event, the Posner Pro Bono Exchange. This event honors the memory of the late Gene Posner, a member of our class of 1936, who was a lawyer, entrepreneur, and philanthropist here in Milwaukee. It is right that we should honor his memory because so much of the work that has been done by our students, our pro bono work, has been supported by a gift of the Gene and Ruth Posner Foundation, which is led by Gene's grandson, Josh Gimble, a lawyer with Michael Best and Friedrich here in Milwaukee. While we ourselves have invested in public service or public interest work over the recent years, creating an office of public service and appointing Dana Chikosky, a Marquette lawyer of our class of 1990 to lead it, much of our pro bono work has been supported by this gift of the Gene and Ruth Posner Foundation. In particular, it has supported the creation of the position of pro bono coordinator, ably filled by Eddie Olson of our class of 2003, who has done so much of the work leading up to today both in terms of preparing for this particular event and far more broadly in working with our students on so many of their pro bono placements. I had the privilege to meet Gene Posner several times after becoming dean before his death at the age of 90 in 2005. I was able to get a sense of the man, his commitment to Milwaukee, and his belief in the role of lawyers, perhaps Marquette lawyers in particular, in helping individuals to solve their problems, whether those individuals were replete with resources or instead in need of other service. At the same time, my knowledge of the man is paltry relative to that of his grandson, Josh Kimball, and so I have asked Josh to say a few words in remembrance of his grandfather and by way of introduction to today's event. Josh? My father graduated from 1936 from this great law school. My father graduated. He's had his 50th anniversary, a reunion this year. He, he graduated 50 years ago in 1960 from that law school. My brother graduated from this law school in 1983, and I went to a different Wisconsin-based law school <laughs> and a few years after that. But uh, thanks to the dean, I think he's made me an honorary uh, Marquette Law graduate, so I'm really honored to be here today. I'm also honored to have my daughter, Lena, here today. We just rushed from uh, St. Joseph's Hospital. You can't get here from St. Joseph's Hospital <laughs> in 15 minutes, so, but we did the best we could. We were visiting her a new uh, cousin, my uh, niece, who was sister had her first baby, so we were very nervous about that. Uh, and she might be the class of 2024, so we could have another one here as well. Anyway, I'm thrilled to be here uh, for this, the first Posner Pro Bono Exchange. Many years ago, we gave away a plate for uh, pro bono minorities here, but I think this is much more meaningful because we're recognizing uh, some accomplishments here by the student body, and we have had a great presentation in a moment. Um, but if my grandfather was here and he practiced law for 60 years, he'd be very proud to see what an incredible turnout we have here today. Uh, he would also be impressed with Marquette's commitment to instill in the law students the importance and duty to provide pro bono legal services. I, I finally recall my grandfather at the Posner building down on uh, just west of the river on Wisconsin Avenue, and my brother and I would be playing around in the old offices there, and he'd, he'd see people coming and going from his office, and he was providing them with legal services, and often he didn't collect a fee from it. As the dean pointed out, my grandfather was an entrepreneur, a, re a real estate owner, a businessman, but he also practiced law, and oftentimes he wouldn't collect fees. So he told me, at, and my brother, at, at an early age, that uh, us lawyers, or he was pointing out himself at that time, hold a monopoly on providing legal services. 
and that is imperative morally and ethically to provide those services for free, for free for those that can't afford to pay for them. Um, I encourage all of you to heed that same advice when you become practicing lawyers, and certainly your track record is great in providing that now. You've created the positive habits that you'll carry on. Um, I'm, I'm enthusiastic to be here. Uh, I'm enthusiastic to support what we're doing here and what you, you students are doing here, and looking forward to presentations. Thank you, Josh. Mike Boucher, who is our distinguished fellow in law and public policy, has agreed to lead this inaugural pro bono exchange, Posner pro bono exchange. The exchange will be, appropriately enough, with a Marquette lawyer, Rini Habach of our class of 1978. Rini is truly an exemplar. In 1997, she established the Chicago Coalition for the Homeless Law Project, which she continues to lead. In that capacity, she has been involved in advocacy on behalf of homeless individuals particularly children. Sometimes this advocacy has been in the form of counseling and negotiation. Other times it has required litigation. Even before 1997, Rini was involved in such matters, serving, for example, as supervisory attorney for the Homeless Advocacy Project of the Legal Assistance Foundation of Metropolitan Chicago. She is regarded, rightly, as a premier civil rights lawyer, both in Chicago and more broadly. Indeed, I met her when she received Marquette's All-University Community Service Award in 2006. I should add for a not unimportant point that she comes endorsed as well by her classmate, Julie Darnader, our adjunct professor who leads the Marquette Volunteer Legal Clinic, surely our flagship pro bono undertaking. Without more, let me yield to Mike. Dean Kearney, thanks very much. And uh, Rini, welcome back uh, to Marquette University Law School. This all seems so familiar, isn't it to you? It's... Uh it's odd to be on this side of the desk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I want to begin with your experience at Marquette, because when you and I were talking on the phone a couple of weeks ago, you remarked to me about how your Marquette experience helped determine your path, your career choice. Describe for us what, what you learned here and how it's applied to your life. Well, let me first just congratulate all the inductees here. I believe the dean just said 65 people. And from my vantage point, looking out here, I say this is a really formidable group of folks doing pro bono work. So congratulations to you, and welcome to the fight. <laughs> um, but to answer uh, the question, when I came to Marquette, I came as an undergrad in 69. And our country was in a lot of upheaval at the time. We had a war on poverty that we weren't winning. We had a war that we weren't winning. And we had tremendous consciousness about struggles around issues of feminism, the role of women, and race in our country. Really, all these issues continue in one way or another. But what was so great about Marquette when I came here, undergrad and then also in law school, there were always a community of people here who were people of conscience and people of skill and people of commitment. And if you wanted that, if you wanted to touch that thing and make that part of your life, you could, whether it was faculty members or people who had, uh, were very involved in the community. Uh, Casa Maria was here, which was a settlement house. There was a lot of work done against poverty at the time through Casa Maria. Uh, a number of the religious at Marquette were involved in efforts to end the war. Um, and I felt, you know, Marquette was an excellent school in terms of the skills you need to be a lawyer. So I felt that for me, you know, I, I took seriously the Catholic message to care for your brothers and sisters. And I haven't always done it as well as I should. I'm sure, but I found in this community a place to learn to do it the best I could do it, and really having a law degree from Marquette opened a lot of interesting doors for me and, and shaped my life as a civil rights and anti-poverty lawyer. 